Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic day slash night wherever you are around the world. Thank you guys so much for your love and support and for commenting and watching my videos. It's truly appreciated. Tonight we're going to watch um, this short video titled I Wanted to Kill Muslims, Now I Am One. So I'm very intrigued to watch this video. Um, I'm very sure it's got a lot to do with bigotry, hatred, and clearly overcoming that obstacle. So let's um, check this video out and see what the story is about. And I'll share my thoughts at the end. All right, guys. I get a knock at the door and hear uh, two guys in a suit. I'm from the FBI. The first thing I have to say is, what took you guys so long? I told them the truth. I was gonna make my own IED and I was gonna set across the Islamic Center over in a bank's parking lot and I was gonna dial it in and just watch the show. Growing up, I saw a movie and it was Rambo. Rambo was tough, respected. He had intestinal fortitude. I said, that's what I wanna do. I went off and joined Marine Corps. I wanted the action. The first time I got shot at, I remember looking at my watch and I says, man, this time last year I was in English class. I fought several times in the Middle East, Desert Shield, Desert Storm, South America, Philippines, Somalia. I think the worst things that I have seen is dead children. I had to suck it up. I had to be there for my guys. Each one of those teardrops stands for a confirmed kill. I stopped adding after 26. Where I was taught Marine Corps, just own it and then let it go. But there comes a time when there's too much of that and you can't turn it off anymore. I want you to give me a window into your state of mind at that time. <sighs> One time my wife and I went to a DSW and I saw in the distance these two women in black burkas in my store. I cried as I prayed for enough strength to go over there and break both their necks. I was just angry. I was just full of hate and it just fed off itself. At that point, I was drinking a half gallon of vodka every two days. I had devised a plan, create my own IED, homemade bomb, and I was gonna set it off right outside the Muncie Islamic Center. 200 plus killed or injured. That was the plan. I saw an opportunity to do one last thing for my country. This was my rationale. I knew I would end up in a federal prison with a needle in my arm. I didn't care my hatred of Islam. It was the only thing that was keeping me alive. So one day my daughter comes home, second grade maybe. She was telling me about this little boy who sat across from her, his mom came to get him. She, she said she had scarves on her and she had a dress all the way down to her feet and you couldn't see her on nothing but her eyeballs. At that point, I snapped. Started spewing things out of my mouth that should never be said in front of children or anything. She didn't say anything. It was the look on her face. I remember my daughter looking at me like I was absolutely the craziest person on the face of the earth. She was my little buddy. Yeah, she used to say we were road dogs. I know, I, I, I saw it in her eyes, I made her question that love. And that's when the light bulb came on. I decided to give the people of this community one more chance. So I went to the Islamic Center, see a gentleman in the shoe room taking off his shoes. He looks at me and he smiles. He said, can I help you? And I said, yeah, I want you to teach me about Islam. So he went and he gave me a Quran. Read this, come back when you have questions. So I did. And I would see things in the book. I'd be like, there it is. I got them right there. Explain that to me. And they would. This was a, a kind of awakening. Long story short, eight weeks after that first day I stepped into the Islamic Center, I became a Muslim. I'm a Muslim, a veteran, and a proud American. I had learned that I was completely wrong about everything that I felt.
You know, Judaism had a message, Christianity had a message, Islam had a message. Funny thing is, though, it was the same message. It was about peace, and it was about love. Please join me in welcoming Mr. McKinney. My big thing is now to stop the hate. Nothing good has ever come out of hatred. I've done too many things. I've hurt a lot of people. I have to live with that. But if I can stop somebody else on the path of non-forgiveness, I won. Wow, guys. So that was a very interesting story there. A testimony of a guy in the United States um, that had a plan to commit a horrible act um, onto a mosque and its adherents. Um, very shocking, first of all, just seeing that mentality of pure hatred, um, you know, stemming from God knows where. The one thing that really struck me was when he said, this is something I'm going to do for my country. See, I have a strong opinion against nationalism. I think nationalism is nonsense. People to, you know, have this pride and honor and dignity about um, a place that they were born at and the country they were born at, something that had absolutely no control over makes no sense to me. To be a nationalist um, at the expense of other people, which is generally what nationalism does. Nationalism is a form of exclusion because it only sees their people as superior. And that is something that we could see in this example with this gentleman, because he wanted to do one last thing for his country. This, these women in burkas came into his store. So that language itself is very dangerous. And I think um, nationalism is a very dangerous kind of concept because it does promote discrimination against people. And a lot of it is unjustified because you have this self-righteous belief that because you were randomly born in a certain place outside of your own control, that suddenly, you know, you win the gold medal and the place is yours and it comes at the expense of others who are inferior to you. What's amazing as well was uh, his response about how his daughter reacted. You actually saw that his child had more logic and sense than he did. The look that she gave her father like he was a crazy man was the honesty of children. Children don't lie. So when she looked at her father in that way, she knew deep down that what he was saying and what he was doing was completely wrong. One thing I do uh, commend this gentleman about is that he decided to go into a mosque and to actually experience what Islam is and what these people do. And by doing that, he opened himself up to, you know, avenues that were not available to him beforehand. The fact that he got a Quran and that he started reading it is fantastic because only eight weeks later, he became a Muslim. And not only that, he became president of the mosque at the Muncie Islamic Center, which is pretty amazing. I was very, uh, very intrigued by this story. And as we can see, this man has had a very dark past and he's done a lot of wrong things, you know, and taken part in these wars, you know, um, being a recruit in the military and things like that, where he's killed at least 26 people is absolutely horrific. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, he would have just lingered in that state of ignorance. And, you know, there's no way he would have been forgiven for that. So guys, I'm just amazed that he ended up on this journey, you know, and that goes to show you to never be close minded to opening yourself up to different ideas and different kind of um, beliefs, because you, you just don't know which way the road will take you in life. But you, you cannot be closed off. You cannot have this mentality. It won't get you anywhere. But being open-minded and having an open heart can lead to some great exploration in your life and some amazing destiny. So I'm very happy for this gentleman. And I want to thank you guys as well for recommending this wonderful video. Had a happy ending at least, but lots of dark moments in between. Don't forget guys to like, comment below. Um, and um, advise me what you'd like me to react to next. Lots of love, guys. Peace.